Hello, everybody. Um, wow. Well, it is National Suicide Prevention Week. We have a couple people joining us now. Uh, in just a few minutes here, I'm going to be joined by Andre LaRoe. Um, he is a Brooklyn-based photographer. Uh, he has been working on some really awesome projects for our campaign, Another Day With You. Um, we're also going to be joined by Carissa, an artist based out of the Bay Area in California. She works under um, a company called People I've Loved. I adore the work that she does. So it's very excited. I see Andre joining. Um, Chris, let me know if you're here. I got a couple announcements for everybody uh, before we get started and before I invite them on, just so I don't um, take up too much of our conversation time with them. World Suicide Prevention Day is this Friday. That's September 10th. Uh, here in the U.S. We are getting loud for World Suicide Prevention Day. Uh, this week, there have been action steps for National Suicide Prevention Week. So if you are interested in being a part of this conversation and a part of helping people stay, raising funds for treatment and recovery scholarships, you can still get involved. It is not too late. Here's a couple things you can do to get connected to the campaign. First, um, follow us on social media, which you probably are doing if you're on this feed. Our action steps are dropping there every day. You'll also find them on our website, twaloha.com slash WSPD. Okay, second, right now we have a matching grant. So I just saw somebody give. Thank you so much for that gift. We have a matching grant of $20,000. We have an overall goal to raise $250,000. All of these funds help us create treatment and recovery scholarships. So it is a great time to give every donation that is made somewhere down there. That's going to be matched. Uh, so please, uh, if you have the ability to give, if you're in a place to give, we encourage you to do so. It is truly life-saving for some people to be able to access care when they need it. Uh, okay, so it's also three. Not too late to grab your WSPD pack. Um, we've got an awesome shirt. We've got some great things that we're actually going to be talking with these conversation cards in just a minute when I bring Andre and Carissa on. And then I'll kind of give you a little bit more um, updates about how you can get involved. But for now, because there's going to be a couple of us on screen, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the commenting. However, uh, questions can still be submitted. So if you have a question, I believe it's the little button, um, or it's a little dialogue button with a question mark. Submit a question, that's the best way. Um, but I am gonna go ahead and see now if I can invite on our dear friends, Andre, and see if this works. It's like things pinging into outer space, hopefully coming back, connecting. Yay, Carissa, hi. hi. How are you? Andre, there hey. you are, my friend, What's my up? friend. Okay, so. It went into outer space and it came hey. back down. We are now digitally connected and having a chance to to have a conversation like with friends. This is so exciting. Carissa, you're a new friend to me, but I have been following your work. Um, I believe you know Andre and have been connected, but I, you're like, no, no, no. Um, would it be okay for you guys to go ahead and introduce yourself in case there's people who are not following one of you? And if they're not, then like, why are they not following you? Um, and can you, I, can I introduce Carissa? And, Oh, no, because I can't, I, I, I will not do your introduction justice. That's okay. Wait, but I actually, I'll, I'll try, I'll try. Um, yeah. Go. Um, Carissa Potter is a Bay Area based, um, I don't even know what to use the word, like full artist. Um, you can see behind her, she has like this really lovely painting that she made. Um, I think that her work is really accessible, but the number one thing that I love about it is it always speaks about how we're feeling. If you head over to... Um, her page for the folks that follow to love, to write love in her arms. It's really like a beautiful partnership of just honesty, right? Mm. Like nailed it. It's never, yep. it's never like, Oh, like everything's amazing or, Oh, everything's awful. It's just like a, an honesty about everything that's going on and how, how you're feeling in the moment. And it's just really lovely. Cause I, I see all these comments that people have where they'll just say, thank you for making me feel seen. Um, and so that's Carissa's work. It's like always focused on like a, a truth and, a simplicity, but that doesn't mean that simple is always easy. Ah, mm. uh, well, shit. <laughs> uh, you, you did a much better job. I so I have like a really I have a really difficult time introducing myself, but then I also now 
I should have you all the time introduce for introductions, but also, I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so I, I can, can I just tell a quick antidote about when I first met you, we were both on a panel. Sure. Um, Andre, is it, do you say a New York based photographer and yeah, I say Brooklyn how do you based, get, but you can say whatever. Oh, I'll, I'll do the little, the little like snippet and then you can tell your story. I'm a Brooklyn based oh, portrait okay. photographer or excuse me, a Brooklyn based visual artist. And I specialize mm -hmm. in portraiture and narrative storytelling on to Carissa. Okay, so I met you, and he was on a or we were on a panel together in the Bay Area, and Andre totally blew me away with like his and I mean I don't want to like overuse your sort of like you were honest in like this beautiful like kind and genuine and sort of like self deprecating way, but also it was charming and hilarious at the same time. And I I, I have to say I do really agree with the fact that when you um, introduce yourself as a storyteller. You are a fucking fabulous storyteller. Um, and I just, I, I, I don't know, I met you and there was like, I don't know, 400 people or whatever in the room and like all of us fell in love with you instantaneously. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I just feel really lucky to know you. Um, and I also really love your work. Uh, I think that you can summarize the most complex narratives in a single image. And I think that that is a, a, a really difficult skill to have. Thank you. That's um, great. All right. Well, who's going to introduce me? Us, but... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so I actually forgot to introduce myself. So it's a good time because there may be people, Andre, in your community or Carissa in your community. Um, my name is Lindsay Kolsch. I work with Two Right Love on Her Arms. I've been a part of the team since 2009. I have the yes. privilege to co-lead the organization um, with my counterpart, Jessica Haley, and really uh, to write Love on Her Arms mission is to present hope and help for people struggling with depression, addiction, self-injury, and suicide. Uh, really, we want to make conversations about mental health accessible, something that you two, it clearly resonates with you all, and we want to make help possible. So right now, we're actually uh, in the middle of our World Suicide Prevention Day campaign, uh, which World Suicide Prevention Day is Friday. So this is like a very busy, active week. You might be seeing a lot of mental health nonprofits talking about um, suicide prevention, suicide prevention awareness. But for us, that term doesn't really, that's not really how we label what we're doing. What we're doing is creating conversations, um, creating proximity to the conversation so people can enter in to it and feel like it's okay to have maybe suicidal thoughts or to be someone who struggles with that or someone who may have had an attempt of suicide um, someone who's lost someone to suicide so all of these things are are human at the core like this is part of what it means to be human and the fact that we're afraid to talk about it just means we have work to do um kind of collectively and this is kind of part of the work right so the idea kind of got started with andre you have last year you did an awesome portrait series um just sharing, like you said, sharing the last year's, what was it, was worth living for. So you were kind of capturing yeah. what people were living for in the middle of this pandemic, which we're still in the middle of a pandemic. And this year, yeah. our campaign statement that we're rallying behind um, is another day with you, kind of this idea of let's, we really, like, we just want people to stay. We want people to keep going. And so um, you're doing another amazing portrait essay for us is that what you call it is i don't know like if that's the term i don't know for what we're doing words are hard words are hard but we're kind of you've captured these stories in portraiture and also some of the words of what's happening so we just dropped today the first of a series so that's going to be kind of unfolding this week and then throughout the month of september yeah and then i don't remember how it came about but i was like Hey, Andre, I remember you connected to Carissa and I like love, I love her work. Is there any chance we could get a conversation together? And she was like, I'll do anything with Andre. So I was like, okay, well, looks like what I said was, I don't know, Carissa's really mean. So I don't, you know, <laughs> that was just very sweet. Yeah. It's true. Um, if I could, I actually wanted to start with something that has been bothering me for the last two days. Okay. Um, yesterday, um, Michael K. Williams died for the folks that are fans of The Wire, Boardwalk Empire. Mm -hmm. um, he's a Legend. very talented actor. Um, he was uh, a dark skinned man with a scar across his face. And to be honest, um, I, this is going to sound funny. I've cried like 10 times in my life. I'm just not a big crier. And I cried in an Uber this morning. Um, I think it's because like this last year has been so scary. We've had, or the last 
two years at this point. We've had so many, so much death that it should, yeah. you know, it should never become normalized. And I think yesterday, the thing that's really scary for me personally is um, not being able to like live with our black elders, like people mm. that have created art that's like impacted us. Omar's, I mean, sorry, Michael K. Yes. Williams' most powerful role is Omar, Omar Little. He is yeah. like a, a, a guy who robs drug dealers. He was also gay. And there was like this tenderness and this like, and like and violence in his role. But, they, you know, one of his co-stars said it the best. He said is Wendell Pierce, I think his name is, that Omar has done a great job of portraying roles that we'd crawl, with people we'd walk across in the street and not think twice about. And I think it just sucks that we are missing this person in the world. And like, I mean, I, I went to bed reading an article of his and I woke up this morning reading an article of his. And for me, the most, the highest likelihood I have of like self-harm or like really depressive thoughts are when I feel like, cause life's scary, you know? Um, yeah. And I think also the prospect of death is very scary. Some of us have faiths that have us believe, you know, that we believe that other things come. But, you know, the idea that this thing that we've become acclimated to with around people that we love and care about want to have another day with are just gone and i recognize that we don't know celebrities and you know there is some unhealthiness yeah. in that but just someone someone making art to that level like i've always wanted to make art to the level that like folks could really that like the the level that like an actor like michael k williams did and just to see him not be able to even if he never acted again be able to understand the flowers of what his art means mm. um it's just really frustrating and i think that that really that really hurt to listen to him this morning. I read an article um, in men's health. He said, I got bullied a lot as a kid because I wasn't an alpha. Like I just was very quiet and liked to be myself. And I don't think the space is always there for black people, let alone young black kids to just try to like learn about who they are. In this. And so I think that's been have, hanging over me. And I just want to make sure, because I know that over time, statistically people just stop watching live. So I want them yeah. to hear me say like, we're not here, like, look how cool we are. Um, we're like, Try Love and Arms has been building things for a long time. Chris has been building things for a long time. And it's really rooted in, in an honesty. So I just wanted to start with an honesty. Like, today has been a hard day. Yesterday was a hard day. Mm. Um, it felt similar to Chadwick Boseman. And, like, just the constant death that we're feeling in this last year, may we never become numb to it. Because, like, you know, our life is precious. Um, and that's, you know, really the thing that I wrote that I hope I'm going to share with you soon is that, you know, Life in itself is important, but life based on how we share in community with others is really the power of it. And so to see someone go and be celebrated like that is incredibly tragic, but in a way, very, very beautiful. Wow. I mean, I, I appreciate you sharing how you're doing. That's actually, um, that's exactly kind of what we're here for, right? Like, we weren't really necessarily here to you know, promote any specific thing. I think what we wanted to accomplish today was really like, modeling if that's a word you can use modeling like an honest conversation um some people you you know you may know like andre you and i have a bit of a relationship a little bit more carissa you're new to, to this relationship so it's it's kind of a perfect i don't want to say perfect dynamic but it is a dynamic of like what life is like right like getting to know people and getting like stripping the layers of like that's just like it's not really what it's all about right like it's really about this these moments of connection so um, Andre, heart's heavy for you. I'm sorry about kind of how that is just weighing on you. It's like, <laughs> I, I get that sense. I think I, I did this conversation with, um, another person named Adley a couple of days ago. And I think, I feel like we're kind of just jumping right into th these, these questions that are on these cards. It's like, how are you doing really? Right. Mm. And it makes me think of this, like, man, it's a lot, like, just like, existing being alive today right now it's it's a lot like it's a lot for a lot of people and uh it kind of actually brings to mind one other thing that's literally i've been i've said it to myself maybe the past 15 years 10 years um a friend of the organization said um life is hard for most people most of the time and i thought you know what like that's that's pretty honest like if we're honest with ourselves like life is hard um, but I think what you're pointing to, Andre, is like the life that we do have is like it's so worth it to keep going and to see what's see what another day like you would probably love to have another another performance, you know, from your favorite artist to see and to have another day with a friend. So 
if it's okay with you guys, I would, you know, I would love, I, I know we don't have like a ton of time. I'd love to kind of jump into some of these questions. And, oh, yeah. 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 Um, okay. So I think we sort of, you and myself sort of answered it, but Carissa, so what I'm doing, I'll just give you guys some context with our World Suicide Prevention Day pack, um, along with a shirt and some other things that you can use to sort of reach out to people in your life or in your community, have these like called conversation cards and um, they come with a couple questions to just help you enter into a honest conversation. In addition, they have what's called, we call them resource cards where it literally will help you. If you want to leave this card somewhere, it would leave behind resources for someone who might stumble upon it um, to our national suicide prevention lifeline, to crisis text line, to some of the partners that we point to day in and day out. They also have some um, suicide prevention warning signs. So things to look for, things to sort of think about, um, and just to educate ourselves further. So, but my favorite part of this is really these questions. Um, so we asked, one, checking in with ourselves. I did this, I kind of cheated because I did this before we went live, <laughs> but I was checking in with myself and, and it just says, um, how are you doing really? Um, and you probably couldn't even see that. Um, but Andre said he went first. Um, Carissa, how are you doing? How are you really doing? I mean, it's it's hard because I um, yesterday I had a really difficult day, um, like one of those days that I felt like I, I couldn't get out of my skin, but I really needed to get out of my skin. We've been having we've been having some like kind of roller coastery um, medical issues in my immediate family recently, um, but I don't want to brag or anything, but for some weird ass reason, I feel fine today. Yeah. Is that, um, is that bragging? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it was like, I, I don't know. I don't it feels sort of weird to, to be. But I think it like, when I think about there was something like, I don't, and I don't mean to quote, and I'm not even going to quote because I'm going to butcher Glennon Doyle when she says something along the lines of like, uh, <sighs> fuck. Um, you, you'll never know tomorrow you could be great. And uh, yesterday I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to exist. Um, but today um, somehow feels manageable. Yeah. And I feel like in the really, really hard parts, it's, it's so easy to forget that things can get better. Yeah. And there's yeah. no reason anything should be better. Yeah. It's just like, okay, I need to, maybe today's done. Like I need to, re I need to restart. What is that in video gaming where you're like, Reset. Just yeah, you just like off. read. You just need enough. You just like okay. Today's like I've given it all that I have. Like I got nothing left. Got to go to bed. <laughs> like I just need to restart. And uh, I think that's honest. So touche. I know what it is. We've been having really intense fires. Our fire season in California has been like yeah. not as bad as last year, but mm. it's still early. So yeah. Um, yeah. On the days where it was uh, like ninety one degrees yesterday, which probably doesn't seem hot for like New Yorkers. Um, but we don't have like air conditioning or anything to like cool off. And yeah. um, my daughter has cystic fibrosis. And if the air quality gets above 50 AQI, we have to close all of our windows. And so to be in a house without air conditioning when it's super duper hot and then have to have all your windows closed, it just like makes you miserable. And that's why I was feeling down yesterday. Yeah. I don't, but today I the windows are open. I think that that's something that I learned a lot in the pandemic. I've attempted to do. I can actually touch my toes now. Weird fun fact. I, my whole life, have never been able to touch my feet. I'm not, that's not a joke. Don't laugh. I would show you, but I don't want to, I got stuff going on. Um, but like, just being able to like, for me, a lot of times after I finished photographing, my back would hurt. And I never understood why, because I was like doing, and you see, I've photographed all these weird angles. And just like, the thing that's been helpful about just starting a practice of yoga in the last year is like, let me just take a deep breath and reset even for a moment or like straighten my back or like just listen to my body more has been really helpful. Um, and so like, yeah, it's just little things like maybe I need to drink some water and eat. And there's like sometimes when I didn't realize that something was um, impacting not only my mood, but everything. Um, yes. And that's not a solution for everything. I'm not, this is not drink water Twitter. Like those people are like just drink some water. It'll be cool. But like, there's like little things that impact how we feel that like, yeah. I think listening to your body then starts to practice listening to your mind and your heart because there's things that trigger us and we were unaware of it. Um, yeah. Okay, with you, Lindsay, I want to ask Carissa a question. 
Oh, oh yeah. I have a comment to your statement. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, and then don't forget your question. Um, right. And thank you for letting me go first. Um, but I just want to let you know how much power you have over people is that when you straightened your back, I straightened my back intuitively and felt it and felt like this like sense of surge of energy. And I just wanted to like, I've, I've been focusing recently on like how I, I, I don't know about you guys, but you feel like really helpless in the pandemic, but like actually we do have, we do, I'm taking control of like, Oh, if I want, if, if I want, I have control over my actions. And if I want, I, I mean, there are those things. I know that we're not on like, I'm not sure what you said about pro water drinking Twitter or something, but uh, having just, just being with you um, makes me feel better. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you. Can you guys, oh, I was getting that. We're word. good. We're back now. We're okay. back. Okay. Okay. okay thanks. Thank you for letting me go. Yeah. No, oh, no. Great. Well, um, I feel like we kind of just like jumped right into that question. So you are the last one technically to go, but like, <laughs> but we're not keeping the score. <laughs> Chris, I was going to ask you two questions. One, where did the where did the name People I Love come from? And mm. how did you get more comfortable speaking about how you feel consistently, like bearing your soul for us on the internet? I think all of us that are watching can learn a lot from you. Good. That's a good question. Andrew. I'm somehow really intimidated by how articulate you are in the sense that like, I have been practicing for many years on how to um, have, how to answer this question succinctly and um, have it make sense. And I'm still not able to do it. But uh, people I've loved, I feel like as a name, um, it came from a exhibition I had uh, in like 2010 or something like that. And I really liked, I, I think I have a lot of, or I, I know I have like, like most people, a certain amount of social anxiety um, and difficulty having having conversations and connecting with other people. And I think acknowledging that, I think coming, I have like a station, people I loved as a stationary company, I should maybe mention that. Um, being able to have facilitate these sort of like mini performance art pieces where you could have these complicated conversations and acknowledge like sort of deep feelings was really interesting and for me i i like a, there's a certain neutrality i'm like generally melancholic and i think having the there's like a joy in loved past or a nostalgia that i think mm -hmm. sometimes i know that nostalgia kind of goes in and out of favor and i like to tap into it um lots of times not willingly i'll just sort of there's a danger in romanticizing the past obviously and wishing you could go back in time and and i somehow like it um, but I think for me, I think I just had bad boundaries as a parent, like, or growing up my, um, I was raised in a family of therapists and early childhood education, educators and, um, how I was feeling was important. Mm. Um, and it was also okay. And I'm not saying like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to present this as a, like sort of idealized childhood we definitely had our issues and we definitely like, for example, on the flip side, I think I say things a lot of the time when, and I don't understand the repercussions of how those things are going to make other people feel. Mm. Um, and so it's, it's, it's not good or bad. It just like explains maybe why I have no shame. <laughs> I like that. I really like, you know, actually, Carissa, that's how I was introduced to your work was um, my sister lives out in the, the Bay Area and I've received pretty much, I think every birthday card in the past nine years has been one of your cards. So, <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I know, just no big deal. I just real big fan, big fan over here. Um, I did wanna, before we jump in a couple more questions, I did just wanna mention like a huge thank you to the people who are donating right now. We do have that donate button. Um, we have a matching grant. If you weren't here when I mentioned it, we have $20,000 matching grant. So every dollar you give is gonna be match. Your impact is going to help us sit with um, help, help people sit with counselors this year. Uh, our goal is to provide 3,500 counseling sessions, um, more group counseling sessions, as well as getting people uh, support when they need higher levels of care. So um, it may look like, you know, help looks like I need to go more than once a week to a counselor. counselor. And so that's what the higher levels of care are. So I just want to thank those people um, donating. If you have questions and we get to the end of sort of our questions, um, mm -hmm. If you're watching, please submit them. We turned off the comments just to kind of focus on this conversation right here, but we totally encourage comments. 
Um, so that little, it's like the dialogue box with the question. That's where you can send your comments. Okay. Um, did you have another question, Andrea, or should we pop into a one more? No, you're well, good. Well, I kind of want to talk about, I kind of want to flip that question back at you because I feel like uh, the sort of love and tenderness and openness that you approach um, your subjects and your portraiture, I think that you have, I, I, I guess, what's your relationship to mm. the human condition and also acknowledging sort of the spectrum of emotions? And what's the responsibility you have when telling other people's story? Ooh, hard hitting questions. Sorry, maybe that's too tangential. Those are good. No, I'm here for it. Let's do it. Um, I'm just laughing because <laughs> one second. they're asking me what responsibility I have in telling other people's stories. There are other people in the room and we are right. working on a project about this right now. <laughs> Which is pretty much no, why are you apologizing? Also, that's a cool top because it looks kind of like it's made out of terry cloth, but it looks like really athletic. It's not. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think, first of all, one of my friends, this, I have a friend who's a photo editor at the Times, and although that sounds great, he's actually never hired me. <laughs> um, he told he should me hire that, you. No, I love him. but Let's put it in the use, oh, universe. If you want to be. People, other people there hired me. He's, he's in for it. <laughs> um, he and his wife just had a second baby, so I think he's worried about that right now. Um, he was telling me that he's like, your work, primarily is one of like touch and longing, which I never really thought about. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like, I have, I've had this conversation with a couple of people, but like the ability to feel and express anger is something that isn't always uh, made available to men, specifically black men. Um, because, you know, if I express anger incorrectly, there are many repercussions that could end with loss of life. And so um, I've always, although I've spoken a lot, I've recognized over time that I've like pretty buttoned up with how I feel and don't always love to share that. Um, but I think that through my work, I feel this deep responsibility when people share things that were like painful or like formative for them, because like at the end of the day, all human experience is like how you deal with conflict. And so like every time I tell a story, um, I try my best to find that and translate it and hope that other people see it. Like, you know, I don't take pictures of buildings. I'm not, I can't, I, don't, I just can't do it. I'm not good at it. Um, and so it's harder for people to come to my page and just like something because basically like, you know, when we see stuff, we see things that we can relate to, right? And that's why I think both of y'all's work is so important because Try Love Your Arms work is constantly just, you had this lovely piece about birthdays recently that I want to touch on in a minute. Um, and Crystal, like so many things that you share are just like, hey, we're humans, like let's honor and respect that. And so for me, I just tried to boil it down to, I don't know if you've seen, I've been adding more text-based things to my work this year. It's just saying like, sometimes it's not the image, it's just the truth of the situation. And so like, how do I balance it? I, a touch for me is something that's really important. Like I love getting a hug from a friend. And so I'm always fascinated with how people are touching things, whether it's like another person or the things that are around them. Um, and so I always try to incorporate that in my work and know what responsibility we have. Like we have a lot of responsibility. After I take photos, I need folks to look at it and feel like they're properly and accurately represented. And then also that, you know, when I'm getting ready to share stuff that they say, this, this is a representation of who I am. It's not always gonna be like a perfect light of who they are. Like in terms of like, they're not always gonna come out rosy and look like it's their wedding day. Um, Cause that's when people are supposed to look their best, whatever. Um, but it is going to show them at that time and like that place. I have a story that came out over the weekend with the Wall Street Journal that um, is an anniversary yeah, piece about 9-11. It was mm -hmm. a lot. Um, mm -hmm. It was about a woman who has breast cancer and she um, was there at ground zero and now she's a teacher and she has to go back to work again. So it's a question of like what her health is like. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I'll wait because you guys froze for a second. I think it's probably me freezing. Yeah, we can hear you. I, at least I can hear you. Okay, y'all are back. Um, yeah. Okay, great. So um, yeah, with, with, with her story, my the primary thing, I, you want to rush in and be like, what's it like to have cancer and be a teacher, right? That's what you want to do. That's where your brain is. But the point isn't that she has cancer. The point is that she continues to choose to like live another day with the people around her, with her coworkers that take her to chemo, with her child, her young child that she loves so much. Like the point of this is um, how does she deal with it in the face of this like really traumatic thing? And in that way, it's like all about like, just forgive this one Bible reference, but 
be like when John the Baptist says to Jesus, like, I must decrease so you can increase. There's like a beauty in that. And that that is my job is to like find people, tell their stories and try to like leave myself out of it as much as possible to let them speak. And thankfully the people that like my platform like that. Um, so yeah, thank you for the question, Carissa. I do think you have a, a, a tremendous amount of empathy and understanding. And I think, I think that's a real gift that you offer people. I think it's an only child spending a lot of time by myself, not ever meeting my dad, so feeling rejected at an early age, and honestly loving being around other people, so just thankful that they tell me things all manifested in one. I love the people that are watching this who are like, I don't know what people are like, watching what did this I for, watch? but hopefully, hopefully this has been helpful for them. It's very normal to be sad, everyone. We're, we do it constantly, and me and Chris will make art out of it, so. I Lindsay, agree. I'm sure you have other questions. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, this is great. Like, wherever the conversation goes i mean we're not Lindsay, your roots look happen. great everyone's looking healthy i love it <laughs> oh good um okay i do have two things that i wanted to touch on mm -hmm. and this one's um so i mean we've already gone deep so like we just keep going um name a moment you asked for help what did it feel like and what happened next can i go first mm. absolutely go for it Wait, are you saying, do I want to go first? You yeah. Want to Wait, which one? <laughs> no, you go first. No, 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 no. You go first. I've been going first this whole time. That's not true, but I will. Only because I will. Uh, so I have a complicated relationship with help. There are certain people that I feel really comfortable asking for help with, but I have, a, um, I've been married or I've been with the same person for 11 years, which is kind of a feat when I think about it. I don't, again, with the like self-congratulatory things, like staying with one person for that long is, has been a challenge. But uh, I think the sort of culture in their family is much um, like you don't, you don't ask for help. You, you help yourself. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of times in our relationship where if I ask for help, I feel resented almost. And it's not that it's like a conscious thing, it's just different ide living ideologies. But for me, I, I need help. I like, I acknowledge that I, I really need help. Um, and there are limitations that like my body just can't, I, I just can't do. Um, and I think it's, it's challenging to live in a world where our, our meaning is bent on how much, how much how many things we can get done and how productive we are and how clean we can keep the house mm -hmm. um, and how many dinners we can make and how much money we can bring in. Uh, it's, it's just exhausting. And we, I'm sort of waiting for the day that I can just sit back and say like enough is enough. And I, I don't need help because I, I, this is it. This is, this is, this is where I want to be. Um, I do feel really lucky that I was that um, both my parents were really receptive to help or needing help and helping me regardless of their intentions regardless of their sort of personal needs um my father came to live with us in the pandemic um my mother recently saved me again from like a, a, a deep spot where in which no one else can sort of save me in the sense that like she comes and, and, and she forces me to get up in the morning and like go for walks and things like that. And, and that sort of love is just, it's, it's so paradoxical that parental love, you spend your life like trying to replicate it, or at least I, if you have good parents um, and it creates kind of unrealistic expectations, but I'm, I'm really lucky that I've had a really supportive helping family and friends too. I have really great friends. Yeah. Thank you. So you've always sort of, been met yeah you've been met carissa with people who are receptive to your request your vulnerable requests um, I, I, do, I do think it's a real privilege to be able to exist around a community of people that will accept that i feel comfortable that will accept me for the most part for who i am i think that there are obviously some instances where perhaps i'm uncomfortable but um it's really not a luxury I take for granted or I try really hard not to. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Andre? I think it's a mix of things. I think that, um, like I said, I've, I've only ever met my mom. All right. Obviously <laughs> I never, I'm sorry. I never met my dad. So my whole life, my mom, my mom's awesome. I think that because we're immigrants and because, um, my mom did a lot from an early age and I had to kind of hang out by myself a lot. Um, you kind of just learn to just grin your teeth 
like grit your teeth and do whatever you have to do, which isn't the most helpful thing. I think like, for example, like I cried a little bit in the Uber today and like said that. And I immediately was like, don't baby me (laughs) to that other person, which is not the most helpful thing. Um, But I think that like, Asking for help for me is it's difficult because unless it's specialized, like something I don't know how to do, I prefer to just do it. Yeah. Like I love like when I, I'm like like getting into directing like short films and like you know branded content. I'm, sure, I'm sorry for all of you that have seen that. <laughs> um, I am, have no problem asking folks who know like how to help me with the professional thing, but I think personally, I, I think it can get difficult for me because I feel like there's so much context and I worry how long it'll take me to explain or I worry how it'll be received or I just worry mm-hmm. like either this person's not going to understand and either validate me or invalidate me and both mm-hmm. I think are dangerous depending on what the decision is. And so I think it can be very difficult for me to ask for help depending on what it is. Um, what I'm just kind of like, I just need to do what I have to do. But I think my learned lesson in the pandemic is just recognizing like how hard and heavy a lot of things have been weighing. And so if I don't ask for help, whether that's like delegating a work task or just talking about how I feel, I'm going to be in bad shape. Um, And something I want to point out, because I just turned 30, and I think you you already know this, um, it's been really weird in the pandemic. I think a lot of us have shifted our relationships really aggressively. Um, Like our, some of our like, you know, close friends, you know, people were dating, like a lot of folks had drastic changes. Um, And I think that made it even hard to ask for help because now, Maybe mm-hmm. folks that you saw every day you didn't see, or maybe some folks were doing were doing more COVID unsafe things yeah. than you'd feel, or you know, just all of a sudden mm-hmm. everything has shifted and it got more difficult. Mm-hmm. And so my learned lesson in the last couple of months has been like, if I'm upset about something, figuring out what it is I'm upset about and how I can solve that and not linger in my frustration of maybe someone I used to be able to ask for help, because if anything, it shortchanges my ability to con- to converse with that person going forward. Um, Because I'm just like, like whether or not the thing that they did is like horrible or um, whatever, like at the end of the day, like, you know, (laughs) if it hurts both of us, it doesn't help at a time when we really have to be like as supportive as possible. Yeah, that's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that, Andre. Um, Andre, are there, oh, sorry. Oh, are there, are there instances, uh, I'm, I've been thinking about this, are there instances in in my own personal life, so it's not that it's not projecting on or I am projecting on you. Um, but are there instances where you feel like you've had to like let go of certain relationships? Because how do you know what's the sort of boundary between something that you know that you can address and potentially fix and sort of accepting that just maybe it's not a the right time or a right fit? Um, I'm a big person on effort, huge on effort. Um, since I never, never met my dad, my energy has always been, I will never convince anyone of anything. Like I am not into that. I'm not trying to talk to anyone enough. Of it. If you don't want to do something cool. <laughs> um, and so I think that like, that's something I've struggled with is like, how do I know when something is over? Like, mm-hmm. let's say this used to be my best friend and now we just don't see eye to eye. So maybe this is just a, I got love for you, but we're separate. Um, mm-hmm. I've struggled with that for a long time. And I think in the last year, my energy has been like, Okay. You, from like our life as Disney movie watchers, we're like, oh, when that moment when they come back and apologize and be so sweet, we'll be like, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it won't. You know, yeah. either like, either they yeah. come back and apologize or I apologize and, you know, something happens from it or it doesn't. Like, I, for example, this one I know that this person's not watching, so I'm not worried. I got into a disagreement with a friend in college um, and we didn't, you know, I was just frustrated because they didn't make a lot of time to talk to me about it. They didn't make time to apologize. They just were like, hey, do you want to go to this thing? And I was like, we should talk about this. And so we sat down and I'm just saying this as an example. This is not good to say, but it's fine. Um, They were like, well, you're going to be a girl about it. Are you going to get over it? And I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And I remember kind of detailing what I thought about what they, why I thought I was, why I was frustrated with them. And they said, all right, cool, we'll fix that. And then they just didn't do anything after that. And I just knew. So for me, it's like, it's over if you state your, your boundaries and yes, it's awkward to state boundaries, but please do them. And then the person continues to just not yeah, honor that. do them. Um, yeah. Now there could be a world where your boundaries are like unrealistic. There are times when that happens. It's not very often. So don't run to that. And if that's the case, like 
talk to someone that you trust that is neutral that maybe knows both parties and explain how you're feeling to just double check like am i am i tripping but more likely than not it really is like if someone like habitually habitual line steppers i should also joke but someone habitually um doesn't listen and continues to not do what you're asking if things you're asking are reasonable then it doesn't help you to like blow up on them it just like let it ride because like from experience, a lot of times those relationships come back and more likely you're better off not screaming at anybody. It doesn't really help you a whole lot. But just be honest about how you feel. Um, that's probably my advice to myself is be honest about how I feel. If I'm frustrated because someone didn't make time for me um, and I'm letting it manifest in something else, then I should be honest with that. But I should also speak to the person and say, hey, I didn't like that you did X and then just see how they respond to it after that. Um, but yeah, and it's harder in the pandemic, Carissa, because I've said I had conversations with folks like, it's funny because I think one of these people is watching, so I got to be careful. <laughs> I had a conversation with the folks where I explained something that I really didn't like that they did that had manifested itself several ways, and they seemed shocked. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, this person kind of told me, they were like, I guess I just never thought that you were all that worried about what I was doing because you just seemed good. Like, you don't seem like you need my help, which was really disappointing to me. Um, but, you know, maybe that's the question of me also asking for the help. I don't know. Just to answer your question, like, if someone habitually oversteps my boundaries, then I just try to not let myself forget that and just try to let that whole thing go. I, uh, I, I mean, I think, I think it's something, thank you for answering that. It, it sort of helps, it helps me because I, I think my boundaries are, are very permeable and ever shifty and it's difficult to mm -hmm. sort of um, trust myself and know when, when it's just mm -hmm. no longer no longer working something you said earlier though i just wanted to mention um on 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 feeling anger but not being able to express it uh that i i had that's something i think about a lot um and and can relate to not exactly but uh having a sort of like very intense sort of like yesterday i felt a lot of rage um and really having to like that is one emotion that I'm just really not comfortable. Not in the same way as you. I don't. I don't fear for my life, um, or fear. I, I feel. I still feel safe in a way, but I'm safe mm. for myself and my perception of myself. So it's different. But but there might be a kernel. Mm. Um, but I really appreciate oh, you talking about that. Yeah. Um, so we have. When did we jump on here? We probably have. I think like. 20, 10 more minutes to 16 more mm -hmm. minutes. Just want to double check, yeah. right? We run yeah. out of an hour. Okay. Cool. So can we do um, like one or yeah. two more questions? It's your but show, I Lindsay. Just, we're I... just, we're, I'm just very <laughs> selfish. I want to ask Chris a bunch of stuff because she doesn't return my phone calls. So. No, I'm, I'm enjoying I'm it. Joke, I'm asking joke, each other questions. Joke, if I could, I would just sink <laughs> into the background and then like you guys could just go. <laughs> You know, it's funny because when you when you FaceTimed me last night, I was in this middle of uh, this sort of, I, I was trying to put my, my daughter to bed and it was, it was, we were both like dripping with sweat. And I, I started noticing doing these emotional manipulations that I feel like somehow I learned and I caught myself being like, fine, you don't need to go to bed. We can just stay up all night. And, uh, and then I saw <laughs> your FaceTime coming and I was like, shit, Chris, you got to check yourself. You are technically the adult here, um, and felt that before. And then I, <laughs> and then and then eventually, I just said fuck it, and I opened the windows, and then we got a cool breeze, and then everybody like calmed the fuck down, and we wrote a couple more stories, and life went on. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. Anyway. I'm, it's amazing how the discomfort in our bodies can just change our mood so intensely, yeah. and then not yeah. being aware of it. You know, it's like, have, like you said, have I brushed my teeth? Have I drank water? Have I like just checking in with yourself? It, it just matters. Um, I wanted to ask you all kind of more of a pointed question to sort of the, the moment we are in right now with National Suicide Prevention Week. And if you're, if you're comfortable sharing about it, I'd be kind of curious um, how suicide has touched your life or the people that you, you love. I think the first time I thought about suicide was um, I was 11. And um, like I said, we immigrated here from Jamaica. So um, I had some family here, some elsewhere. But my mom's aunt, so my great aunt, 
um, this older, very British Jamaican woman, my aunt mm-hmm. Glenn. When I go to her house, she had like, like those old British like plates that had paintings on them. She has a really specific aesthetic that like, oh man, I. <laughs> it's, just, it's funny to think about, but she had these two sons. They were like her pride and joy. I think when at some point in her life, her um, her husband had died early, so she took care of her two sons and. Um, she loved them so much. Um, and my uncle was just a very proper woman. Anyway, so one of her sons, I think, was he would just travel and he was working and he like fell off the balcony and like was paralyzed. Like it was happened like immediately, like all of a sudden. Oh and so um, I used to have to stay at her, her, at her house at some time in middle school. My mom was busy. That was where I got where I, I would be watched and. I remember all of a sudden he was just there with us and it was really hard for him. You could see, like, I get it now that I'm like, like I am constantly in motion and for COVID it felt really weird to like be in one place for a long time. And it was just weird because I'd interacted with him before and he'd kind of come play with me and like bring me something from some other country or like tell me some anecdotes and like kind of zip away. And all of a sudden he was just there. Like it was, it was just different. It was energy was different. Everything. He just couldn't move and, he was really irritable and it made sense. And I remember just one day my mom was like, Hey, we're not going to go over there today. Like Aunt Gwen needs like some space and he chose to take his life. Um, and I think in the letter that he wrote to her, he just said that he couldn't like, I think it had been a year and they thought maybe he'd get some of his mobility back and he didn't and he couldn't, and he just couldn't mm-hmm. kind of manage it. And then like fast forward, the other one I want to touch on is um, my friend Vincent. He um, was diagnosed with cancer. I think when he was like 25 or 26 and um, he tried a lot of different treatments and it just made it worse and worse. And you remember he posted this thing that just said, like, I think I'm going to stop. I think I'm just going to let it ride out. And I was like, what are you talking about, dude? And I was, um, I, I don't know if I've ever said this before. That, that photo, Carissa, you've seen it. A, a, a lot of y'all have followed me because of that photo I took of Karama from Queer Eye. The day I took that photo, Winston died. And I remember it because I was flying out of Kansas City that, that next morning. And um, I stayed with this guy, Andre Singleton, who's in the Bay now. You should connect with him. He does the Very Black Project, Chris. So he's awesome. Um, and I remember Andre had cancer when he was in college at Morehouse. He's older than me. And we were sitting in the airport, and I just turned to him, and I was like, you know, how did he do this? And Andre looked at me, and he was like, look, man, when I tell you the pain that I was feeling constantly in those days, like, that like I felt like my body was betraying me. I couldn't think or everything was in like excruciating pain. I, it, it felt like a, maybe a, a way for me to just rest. Mm. And in both things, I think with my cousin Andrew, I was too young to really think about it. But this last one, I centered myself and I was upset that he would do that. And I recognized that that's, you know, his decision. And I think they're, they're two very different things. One, both of them are pretty drastic changes, but they were, really traumatic for the people around them. Um, and so I think I've learned, I learned a lot and I, I just sit in the Kansas City airport at 6 a.m. with someone who had, you know, has been in, re- been in remission for 10 or 15 years and having them explain to me the complexities of it. I think I shifted my energy from like, how could someone do this to like, God, I just hope someone knows that they're cared for, yeah. regardless of what they choose to do that information after the fact. And that probably goes back to what you're asking me, Chris, about how I know when to let it go. It's like, regardless of the decision someone makes, I like have a better understanding as to like how I can be peaceful about this decision or the situation they have. I don't know if I always do it, but I try. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Andre. Appreciate that. I don't, I don't have any, I don't have any sort of, no one, no one close to me has ever been successful. Um, I, when you asked, I, I, I think I, it's, I have a maybe complicated opinion about it. I, hearing both of your stories, um, in those instances, I take a pretty hard stance that uh, suicide is unacceptable. And it's something that I have thought about, I think, all of, all of my life. Um, not the fact that suicide is unacceptable, but and, and that may seem very judgmental uh, to to <laughs> whoever is listening right now, but I think that it's in, impossible to sort of know 
how it will affect other people and how the ripples of, of sort of your sadness will infinitely impact um, mm. the people who do care about you. Whether, but I, I, when I have been in those points in my life where I've attempted, I, I wasn't able to think rationally, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, this is sort of like a, um, a rational Carissa for, for many mm. years. And, and still I, I would rationalize that I couldn't, I couldn't harm myself because my mother was a co-signer on my student loans and would inherit a fun amount of debt. And that I felt a tremendous sense of guilt and I was okay with that because it kept me going. Um, but I think in, in the last time I can remember um, was sort of being on the brink of, of not knowing, having sort of a real, real intense disconnect from reality, um, none of that mattered. Mm -hmm. uh, I just needed to get out of this like pain. Mm -hmm. um, and luckily I, my mother flew out um, and I had a psychiatrist who I hated at the time, but was able to prescribe medication that eventually stabilized sort of mm -hmm. my neurochemistry. But I think, I, I think for me, the, the, I, I think that we're more connected than we know. And I think our, our sadness, I think in both Andre, your examples, I think that there were sort of like physical pain as well as mental pain. And I'm not saying that there's a hierarchy between either. Um, they both are interchangeable in so many ways. Um, I haven't read the body keep keeps score. the score yet, um, but I'm going to someday. Maybe. A very good and, read. Dense read. <laughs> Uh, but I, I get an, a, a best friend of mine for, for many years. We would, we get in conversations about, uh, we have differing views on whether suicide is acceptable. Um, and, uh, for me, I, I, it's too, it's too painful, um, for the people around you that I can't, I can't consider it. And maybe that's a delusion of mine and, mm -hmm. and maybe it's selfish in some ways to say that you can't you have to endure pain because it's going to like, yeah, um, affect other people too much. But at the same time, like we're this giant organism. We're not just this one person. And I, I, um, I don't want to. I don't want to induce pain on other people if I can help it. Yeah. So for you, Carissa, um, sorry about helped. having an unpopular opinion. No, no, no. I'm just saying. I think for you, it sounds like what I what I'm hearing is like it's, it has to be off the table for you personally, because of where you have been, what experiences you've lived through, because it probably was on the table at some point. So if you were seriously considering it, or if you were seriously, if it was an option, if you didn't have that like anchor, then, then it may get to a place where there is a, there, then you would maybe make decisions. I think that's, I think that's in some ways, I don't want to say it's like, it feels like a um, like an anchor, yeah. Like it's like it's unacceptable for me, and so it's gonna help me stay. And like in a in a way, I don't think I have to agree with your opinion, or Andre doesn't have to agree, or anybody watching doesn't have to agree. Because if that's what helps you stay, like like I'm all for you stay. You know, like that. In in a, in a sense, that's a, that's a win for what I think everyone wants to kind of achieve. So it, it doesn't, I don't think it has to be either or, right? Like, I don't think we have yeah. to, I don't think we have to say, oh, that's how judgmental of you. Like, I actually think if that's what, if that's what gives you the ability to ask for help or the ability to get, you know, stabilized when you need it, the ability to just try one more day, like let's reset, let's try one more day. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm for that. Like I'm for you to do that. Yeah, Carissa, what was, what was bad about what you said? You just said how you felt, but you, but remember the thing that you, once again, you do really well and other people should notice is you don't make decisions for other people. You said for myself, this is unacceptable because of this reason. I've had moments where maybe, you know, but I came back from it recognizing that, you know, I didn't want to induce harm on the people I cared about that you're right. It might be selfish or guilty, but like that, you know, I think there are levels to, what we need and primarily we, we we need to have life so i don't i don't think anything was worried about that i hope you don't i was this is just the face i make when i'm thinking <laughs> hopefully i didn't look too um I, I, anything. no 
I think it feels that it there's something that sort of feels off about or judgmental in saying that. And I appreciate you highlighting that. I said that this was just for me. I'm glad I said that because I could have just easily forgotten to say that. Um, but no, I also, and I, well, also, I know you. Uh, these are people who don't. I know that you, I could never imagine you being like, and then this is what everyone has to do. It's just not like an energy you have. Um, but I appreciate, like, it's just, I think that, like, too often when we talk about this, um, we're like, well, yeah, you know, like, when times are dark, I guess you should think about this. And it's like this, like, folky, like, stupid, unhelpful thing where it's like, well, just ask for help if you feel sad. And it's like, no, I am tired. And my head hurts. And I don't want to deal with asking for help anymore because the last four times I asked, people didn't listen to me. Yeah. And today is difficult. And I'm having a hard time remembering if this is what I wanted. Um, and so sometimes their decisions can seem sweeter to you. Like you were talking about the logical and illogical version of you. They can seem like they make more sense in a moment. And like later it could, it could come out. Like it could be this super painful thing for an hour or for six days and yeah. so the, the entire concept of another day like you said this even just saying like acknowledging that you're having such a rough time and then be like and then i woke up today and it was different has immense power so like yeah no i have peace yeah. always say how you yeah. feel and we i all love I it just, i wanted to oh. just add because i know we're well yep. we're running out of time and i oh, know we're sorry. gonna it's gonna no no, no it's good it's i just sad because we're running out of time um i did just want to add you know something that to stuck with me because this is our 10th um, World Suicide Prevention Day campaign, and it was said, I think maybe two or three years ago, like, for, um, he's an expert, Dr. Dr. Thomas Joyner, um, he researches suicide and suicidal, um, like how people arrive at that um, decision to take their life. And, and he said, like, it's really difficult for us with, um, with an unsuicidal mind to understand a suicidal mind. And so I think as we're kind of going through this week, we don't know what's going to save a life, but this conversation and what we're collectively trying to do is we're trying, right? Like we're trying, maybe it's a conversation that, you know, someone's hearing you, Carissa say, like, I've considered it. Like I, I this is what it looks like. Um, or Andre saying like, I, this was my experience. Like, honestly, it's about people just having the permission to say these things and, and suicide, the stigma around it becomes a little bit quieter, right? Like we get to be louder than the stigma that keeps people from talking about these things. So that's really, I mean, that's the goal. Um, I, I'm gonna wrap up only because like we only have- One more oh, thing. You, yeah. Please, for the love of God, I, this is the only thing I want people to hear me say. Do not allow anyone around you, if someone you know has taken their life to tell their loved ones that they're going to hell as a result of it. If I hear someone say it, it's a problem. Wait, say that again? I never, so Chris, you may not know this, but sometimes folks that are, more Christian, um, or actually in other faiths, will say like, "Oh, this person took their life, so now they're they're going to go to hell for it." Let's just make be very clear. Stop yes. saying that. It is not yeah. helpful. If you hear anyone say it, just say, say to them, "I don't agree with this, but let's pretend that what you're saying is true, regardless if it's true or not. It does not help these people mourn. In fact, it is a very cruel thing to put upon someone as they're already mourning." Just want to put that out there. No, no, I mean, yeah, I... Chris. If people say, "I know it's," it's, it's she's wild. like, "What?" <laughs> Chris is so thrown. She's like, why would anyone say that? Yeah, people say that. It's not good. Don't say that. Yeah. What, in what context would that? Like, at, it's not good. It's, it's one of those um, things that, they, that I think people assume is going to dissuade action or dissuade people from having suicidal thoughts or taking suicidal action. Like, I think it's just, um, you know, and that's a whole, maybe a whole nother live, but um, I, mm -hmm. I just wanted to wrap up by saying thank you to, to you, Andre. Thank you, Carissa. <laughs> she's like, wow, she's just like so painful. I know, she's I like, agree, just keep figuring this part out. Um, I want to thank everybody who is watching. There is um, the folks who donated. Thank you so much. There are still going to be ways that you can get involved in the campaign. Go to twaloha.com slash WSPD uh, or follow us on social media. That's a great way to just have these action steps. And an action step could be, Hey, text a friend you haven't um, heard from in a while. You know, how are you doing? How are you doing? How are you really doing? Right? Uh, there's there's ways to still be involved, and I think um, Andre and Carissa have some other things coming up in the week that they'll be sharing a little bit about how they're getting involved. You can check out Andre's photos. Um, they're beautiful. I love them. I'm obsessed. Our whole team is stoked on them. And um, follow Carissa if you have not, because at people I, I love, again, it's big great. Fan. And if everything goes well. Me and Chris are probably going to do something that um, y'all can see and maybe purchase and help raise more money. 
Um, yeah, we haven't talked about it. it yet, but I am now forcing her to work with me again, which is probably no, a mistake on I'm the part. one who I'm the one who keeps texting you about it. Let's not <laughs> present this in such a way that makes me no. It would be my honor. It would be a great pleasure. <laughs> I love it. Um, well, I, I sincerely wish we had more time with y'all. I think we're about to get cut off. So thank you so much. Um, you thank guys you are awesome. Her. I appreciate Inviting. you so much. Thank you for your honesty, for your responses. And uh, um, want to have Thank you, Lindsay. Thing. Thank you, Carissa. Thank you, thank you everyone right. that's in here and chose to watch. Yeah. All right. And Bye, donate, guys. please. Bye. Right. <laughs>